compels me and I love it for it uh, to be against discrimination of any kind in our country. Our rights come from nature and God, not from government. All God asks of you is fight for this, fight for this, fight for this. Fighting for the family, standing for the church, laboring to return to a moral and biblically based culture. This is the American Family Association at AFA Today. And uh, we welcome you to uh, AFA Today uh, from the belly of the news beast, uh, Lower Manhattan, uh, right in the shadow of the Freedom Tower and in the uh, just north uh, of uh, the historic Trinity Church where Alexander Hamilton and several of our founding fathers uh, are all buried. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this edition. Kevin McCullough, really glad to have you here uh, per usual as we uh, take a look at what's going on in the headlines uh, and then also try to uh, keep you posted on uh, any uh, breaking news, changing news, but also try to do something else. We also want to, we, we genuinely want to do this. We want to help obliterate confusion, amplify truth, and pursue clarity together uh, as we uh, do every single day. So thank you for being part of that process. Kevin McCullough is my name, and my phone number is 888-589-8840, 888 A check of headlines this hour shows as... Um, they were talking about at the top of the hour uh, horror in Harlem today. Uh, two buildings completely leveled, uh, collapsing after what appears to be an explosion. Now, according to C- uh, CBS uh, uh, 2 here in New York, they're saying that uh, a, a drone was spotted flying over the scene. That may or may not be significant. I'm not sure um uh, I'm sure that Rand Paul and some people would like to say that it probably is. But there are a number of people saying that it appeared that there was a gas leak, that the the smell of natural gas was very strong in the area. Con Ed had uh, uh, released some crews to go check on that, and the explosion occurred just before they arrived. Um, So it's it's unlikely. Let me just put it this way. It's unlikely uh, that this is anything more than... Uh, a very tragic accident, someone leaving a a gas burner on, someone uh, doing something uh, negligent in the buildings. Two people are dead, dozens are injured, uh, and anything changes there, we will tell you about the latest uh, on the explosion in New York. Charlie Rangel, ever the congressman for uh, with a flair for the dramatic, calling it Our Communities 9-11. I think Harlem suffered on 9-11, Congressman Rangel. I don't think you have to do any type of equivocation of the tragedy of two lives lost in your in your district uh but uh anyway that's that's uh, the uh, the immediate news coming out of uh New York today uh there's there's news uh on the front of where that airplane is and that is that there is no news uh they they think yesterday after a while uh they figured out that possibly uh the the, the plane was either hundreds of miles off course or had turned around in some fashion but when you discover that we have an entire fleet of, of uh, Navy, uh, Navy's finest, U.S. Navy's finest out there looking, when you understand that there are some 47 other Navy vessels from different countries that are out there uh, scanning those waters and nonstop flights looking, 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 this, this still has very bizarre stuff written all over it. And uh, no one is coming up uh, with anything. So that's uh, that's that. Last night in politics, uh, the Republicans won a special election in Florida. That was a little bit unexpected, only because the Republican challenger was so uh, not so well known, uh, and the uh, the uh, Democrat that they were running against uh, much more well known and spent a lot of money. The fact that they still lost, uh, that the Democrats lost in that race, uh, everyone I'm hearing, including uh, Democrats like uh, uh, Juan Williams from Fox News this morning. Uh, saying that bodes uh, poorly for uh, the uh, Democrats in the uh, midterms in November of this year. We'll wait and see. There's a lot of time between now and November. A lot of time. So we'll see what happens. Oh, by the way, speaking of that quietly, President Obama decided yesterday to just sign all uh, mandate uh, enforcement of Obamacare uh, out of the picture until after 2016. Again, again, uh, uh, I've never seen a president do this. Just say, well, you know, I don't like that part of the law, so I'm just going to rewrite it. And that's what he did again for the however many umpteenth time. Now, I'm not I'm not crying in my milk about this. I don't think that Obamacare should have mandates to it. I thought that was one of the things about the law that was really stinky, actually. But the fact that he just, you know, eh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
uh, changes it all on his own, uh, you know, whatever. It's a new day in America, I guess. So that's the latest there. And um, we'll keep you posted on anything that we uh, get. Now, did you see, hear about this story yesterday? Diane Feinstein, uh, who's a lifelong liberal from California, but serves on the Intelligence Committee in the Senate, uh, went after uh, the CIA, saying that the CIA had spied on or hacked through to the Senate Intelligence Committee's reports and stuff. And today, <laughs> John Brennan, who is the acting uh, CIA director, said, uh, well, we wouldn't do a tremendous amount of spying, hacking, and monitoring of Congress. Anybody see any problem with with that qualification? We wouldn't do a tremendous amount. You ever read the, um, the the bedtime book? I only know this because I have ankle biters at the house. Uh, my three and one year old they love books just before bedtime. Blueberries for Sal. You ever read that book to your kids? It's it's been around forever, but it's where Sal and her mom go up the uh, side of a blueberry hill, and uh, the grizzly bear and uh, the little the mama bear and the baby bear go up the other side of the the hill, and the baby bear somehow loses its way and gets connected with Sal's mom, and Sal loses her way and somehow gets connected to Baby Bear's mom, and they both get freaked out and scared, and they find their way back to each other. But there's this great there's this great um, phrase in it when Baby Bear reaches down into mom's pail, the human mother's pail, to eat some of the blueberries, says he puts his, his, his mouth in there, and he could not help but take out a tremendous mouthful. That's what I think of when I hear John Brennan say, well, we wouldn't do a tremendous amount of spying on Congress. <laughs> we couldn't help it. All the blueberries were just up against one another. All the phone lines, all the, all the computer hacking spaces, they were just there. We couldn't help it. We, we just had a tremendous mouthful of spying and hacking. That's all. Okay, enough bedtime stories. Anyway, uh, these are the uh, stories that are making news this hour. We'll keep you posted. Oh, one other story that you're probably going to see some movement on. I've got these. These are inside sources on this. You know that girl in New Jersey that uh, was suing her mom and dad uh, to uh, put her through uh, Christian the to pay for her Christian school the final year and then pay for her college. She was suing them because she said uh, that uh, they were being unfair and holding her to accountability and. Uh, you know, like a uh, hour that she had to be home by every night, and so forth and so on. Uh, the, and this is this is just on inside sources. It could be wrong, could change. But what I have heard is she is dropping the lawsuit and returning home. And at the end of the day, I think that is the best thing that could have happened out of all of that. All right. So uh, glad you're with us, Kevin McCullough. Glad to be with you. I want to get into a discussion topic. And again, anything changes on the major headlines, we'll go to that right away. But I want to get into a, dis a discussion topic today because in Jacksonville, Florida, in Duval County, there seems to be a little bit of a controversy with a teacher in this area. Uh, this is according to uh, Channel 47, WTEV uh, and News Talk 104.5 FM WOKV out of Duval County. But a math teacher at Rebol High School is facing termination after she, after the district rather, found out that she had used profanity directed at her students, and it wasn't the first time. Uh, the radio station, News Talk 104.5 WOKV, uh, obtained the investigation into Joyce Quiller, uh, who teaches at the Bridge to Success program at Rebol. The Duval County School District uh, first began this investigation in January after receiving some complaints from students and parents about Quiller's conduct. The investigation shows eight students in the 10th and 11th grades uh, met with the district, seven of whom accused her of using a wide range of profanities and having a general disregard for their work. One student said Quiller asked a student who, uh, who came to school without a pencil, uh, what is the point in coming to the Mother Effer class if you don't bring your materials? Another heard Quiller tell the student, shut the blank up. When a separate student asked for makeup work, Quiller uh, allegedly told her, I'm not going to help you with this blank. Uh, still another said Quiller criticizes him and calls him the N-word. Those students who say Quiller refuses to let them turn in work, doesn't answer questions, tells the class uh, who is getting an F in front of all the other students, 
An academic audit was performed on Quiller's class as a result of these allegations. The investigations say that uh, she was found uh, assigned 108 of her 140 students Fs, or 77.1. The investigation says a 90.7% of Quiller students received a D or F. Okay, I don't know that uh, grade the, the grade factors into this at all, but here's one of the uh, here's one of the uh, obviously the, the the big issues here. We we live in a society that has been uh, permissive, 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 permissive. We allow language, 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 language to penetrate television, movies, uh, the public culture. You walk down the street, you hear seven year olds saying these words to their mom. Nobody says anything. It's all just a bunch of hooey. If you do say anything about it, uh, like for instance, I was in the grocery store once. I, I saw a seven year old say to his mom, he dropped the f bomb on his mom. Uh, she acted like he didn't say anything. Just went on shopping and doing. Uh, don't talk, don't talk mean to mommy, or you won't get. Uh, I, I wanted to go over there and grab that kid by the hair and drag him out to the parking lot and spank him and say, "You don't talk to your mom that way." Uh, but I know, I guarantee you, if I had in a, in a heartbeat, in a flash, uh, uh, my my life would have flashed before my eyes, and that mother would have uh, pelted me with her um- uh, umbrella until I was barely recognizable. Have you ever noticed that? That's how that's how these things go. So I'm even amazed at this point that uh, someone could be potentially fired for using language in a classroom, and I'm kind of glad of that. I kind of hope that this woman uh, does get uh, fired and is not uh, allowed to keep teaching. But the question I have is, and it may seem theoretical uh, in, in form, but if we have all of these other barriers that have just been knocked down, where we're not going to enforce any type of decency in the public square, on public television, uh, in, in, in public places, and you can't do anything about it. You just have to kind of live with it and shut up. If that's, if that's the case, uh, is it really a, a reasonable expectation to say to the teacher, well, you suddenly have to be different than all of the rest of the public around you uh, just because you're in the classroom? I, I, I'm a little bit amazed that you don't have the teachers' unions marching on this school, screaming and hollering and saying, uh, hey, who are you to tell the teacher what kind of language she should use? Is, is anybody else share my uh, amazement at this? Because I really do find this uh, intriguing. Uh, if you were to tell me that the teacher had slept with a student, I would have a hard time believing that they would even lose their job. Because nowadays... Uh, they barely do. And sometimes if it's been long enough since it's happened, they, well, you know, there's not a lot we can do about it. Here, this one's just cursing and evidently not, not very nice to her students. But she's just cursing, and now she's immediately uh, put on notice of termination. I mean, again, don't get me wrong, I don't want teachers using that kind of language in front of our students, but does anybody else find it surprising that this actually happened. And I'm also curious if you've ever had students in a classroom or in a place where such a thing did happen and how they handled it in that scenario. Because I would think it would be pretty easy to just go to the teacher and say, hey, look, you can't use that language. If you use that language, we have to to can you. So just stop using the language and move forward. I would I would imagine that that if you just did that to the te- teacher, go oh okay I can't swear at the school so I, I just it's kind of like being on the radio you can't swear when you're on the radio, yeah, but you you can do it when you're in you know off the air but when you're when you're when the mic's hot you can't do that because they'll get they'll get after you. Uh, it, wouldn't that be the first remedy on this situation? I'm not defending her swearing. I'm shocked that they're taking action to discipline her. Is it too much? Does it not fit the crime? Should she lose her job? What do you think? 888-589-8840. Kevin McCullough on AFA Today on AFR Talk. Stay with us.